Okay. And so with this dimension, I've got what are called basic dimensions. Basic dimensions give us predominantly size. That's usually what we're getting from them. But there's one element of this that is not dimension. I do know the height of the battery compartment, but I do not know the thickness of the walls or the depth of the in cut here in the cap itself. So I need a little bit more of a resource in order to fully dimension. Because remember, I told you that when you put hidden lines on something, you never ever dimension those, ever. Because a hidden line, this could show as a square or a circle or an ellipse or an oval, and those are different. Uh, so I want to be able to see that clearly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a section through one of the views. Now section cuts are there because it gives us the ability to see things more clearly. And I may use this uh, right side view here to do that with. So I'm just gonna activate the view. And then I go up to my view layout tab. Now you can also do a right click and go down to drawing views and select it here as well. In this case, it's a section view. So there's always multiple ways to accomplish everything in all CAD packages. It doesn't matter what package you're using. As long as you understand the way of searching for things, and it's kind of like being able to search the internet, if you have a question. Um, and I didn't answer Alex's question about measuring those gauge depths. Um, what you can do is take those calipers and measure the peak to peak, and then measure valley to valley. And that'll give you the depth of those pitches. All right, so we're gonna do a, um, like I said, view layout, section view. Now it's gonna get you a yellow box, which means, hey, here's the clue as to what we're doing. Um, you can select a cutting plane line and place it in the view, or you can use a section view propped up and add that, or you can just auto select everything. So when I get into the view that I wanna cut, I have this weird looking icon that has arrows going both directions in line. And you can snap that to the middle. It won't, you'll just feel the, you'll, how do you explain this? It's not like you can feel texture on a computer screen, but as you move your cursor across, there'll be a lag when you hit to the center mark of it. And though your cursor will just kind of move off without moving, you'll know you're at the center. So you gotta get an intuition for it, a little feel for it. So I'll put this right on the center and then I need to, um, once I decide that, I need to go ahead and check the OK box. And I can pull out the section view. Now, when you look at the arrows now, this is section A to A. So each arrowhead can be labeled. You might see multiple arrowheads on a drawing. And you might do what's called an offset section. An offset section that you go through and capture the most detail on there, and I'll show you some examples of an offset section here in just a second. There's also revolved sections, there are, um, but this is just a simple re, um, aligned section. It's a full, it's a, a full section because it's cutting through the entire part. And there's a place this new view. It'll automatically label for you, which is really kind of nice. The arrows always point in the direction you're looking. So everything on the right side of this bold black line is what's been removed. So it's a lot like cutting a loaf of bread and you remove the slice, you can see the inside texture, you can see the crust, uh, see everything in there. This now can be dimensioned because what I don't have on any of my dimensions is how thick this base is and what's going on in these walls. Now, why is there a line right here? What is that? Can someone tell me what that is from? That orange line that's on the screen. What is that from? And I'm gonna give you more view to see if you can tell. What do you suppose that is from? That orange line, why is that orange line in that view? What am I seeing there? That's that blue line. Mm, no, has nothing to do with this guy. This guy right here. What's up? It's one of the fillet ends. Yes, there's a fillet on the inside corner here. 
So it's showing me that there's a rounded surface starting there. Um, I've already dimensioned that up here, so I'm not going to need that, but it does give me that insight that there's a, a change in surface there. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my annotation, my smart dimension here, and I can now dimension what I couldn't see before. And in this case, it's this depth. And I'm just going to pull that right to there. So now I have that depth. That's really all I need to add to this is that one dimension, but it's the only place I can show that is on the section view. Now, the last time we talked, I said, okay, we got lots from this sheet. I just took up a big chunk of, of usable square footage on my sheet here. Your section view does not have to stay in alignment. It can be moved other parts of the drawing. To do that, you select that view, and if you right click on there, do, 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 do. let's come on here. Let's do this. Oh, please tell me I haven't done this to me. Go to view layout, click on the view, that's a highlight. There's supposed to be I guess I'm gonna change that. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Make sure we're in the right view here. There we go. Okay. When you get the view, when you get in the right mode, I'm not saying you have to click the edge of it on the outside, not the inside. Then you can come in here and it says lock view position or unlock position. Okay. So if I have that unlocked, I can now move that is what I'm wanting to do here is move that position, unlock relationships. Let's see, where's that at now? Should say unlock. So we just print this off, right? We will, yeah. You're gonna have like five of them and this is just a battery compartment. What's that? You're gonna have like five, right? You're gonna have, have five or or eight on there. Ooh. Okay. Sorry, it's under alignment now. So if you come down to alignment, sorry about that, and then you break the alignment on your view, now this view can be moved over here and I still have this space, okay? So once you do that, then you have things that you can move around a little bit. So you just have to go align, um, again, I'll right click, it's under alignment and you can break the alignment, okay? If you get your views off, you can go into alignment and reorganize them back into the proper third angle projection on there. So you can have that. Does that this took me a little while to get there. Sorry about that. Multitask here on things. All right, let's take a look here at sections. So what I did was a full section. It's this, it just cuts the whole object, gives me my look at what that section's gonna be like and makes it pretty straightforward and easy. Occasionally though, we might have multiple features on a part. Here's a hole, here's a slot. In this case, you would use an offset section where the line cuts through and breaks through to give you that different view on there. A half section means you removed a quarter of the object. So full section, remove half. This gets a little confusing because these are on the state test. So if I do a full section, I cut it in half. If I do a half section, I'm cutting a quarter of it away. So in this view, the, from this line up is in section and from this line down is in elevation. So especially things that are symmetrical. If they're symmetrical, I don't need to do a lot of extra visuals there. That way I can use this as the right side view and as the section view. Over here, 
kind of talks about the different types of lines. They always point the way the viewer is looking. And we usually show a center line that um, details that what that cut plane looks like. Now we could do an align section. These are a little more um, elaborate where I do not have a symmetrical piece, but I want to show the size of this element here in relation to this element. And so my cut plane takes a bend to it. It's kind of like an aligned dimension, but it's aligning through circles. So the, again, from this center line here up matches to this part of the section cut. And this part here aligns with this part of the section cut. Okay, so it makes it a little, little tricky to involve and understand there. As you get into tool design, we need different types of sections to show what's happening there. So in this case here, we have two, whole, two um, rings or tubes connected with a T-brace. We don't know that's a T-brace until we see the section. So we take the view. Same view as here. We cut a chunk out and revolve it, just spin it around its axis so we can see what that profile would be of a piece right through this area here. Okay, so we get a, a snapshot or a sliver of what's going on in that profile. A lot of times on things like wrenches or uh, brace bars, we'll change shape midway. And so we can get, do things to increase strength, maybe increase torsion or tension on there. So things along that line will happen there. Um, we do have things like a remove section, which is like the revolved. We're going to cut a section right here. If it recreates this look here, it's very similar to revolve. We just don't have the breakout area of the piece. Okay? Now, if there are things that are on our shape, in this case, we've got some ribs here on the side. So if you have ribs, or spokes, or webs, or lugs. This is an example, the yellow here is a web, the blue is a lug. We do not put the cross sectioning through those when we cut the section, okay? One, because they're usually add-ons or they're structurally enforcing, so they, they need to have a different symbology to them. And we keep that a little straight, so. Um, so, you know, they're attached, they're cast or welded, threaded, but um, we don't know what that feature is if we section through it. So we don't want to, we want to keep it separate in the view. Okay. So that's, these are all on your state test. The full section, the offset section, the half section, and I believe you have the aligned sections on there as well. Okay. So just be familiar with those. So you can have those. Okay. And I will probably put this in um, in your course so you have it uh, later today. Okay. Sweet. All right. Now, to add another drawing to this sheet, we go over to our view palette. I'm working on batch slots. So hit the little lip dots. And because I didn't open them up, now I have to go and find the part that I want to do next. And let's see. It's probably going to be A1. Nope. Yep. Yep. A1. Bring A1 because that's part of this assembly. So there's my assembly. There's my A1. You should be able to see your previews. It kind of makes it a little nice to go through. There's the evolution of A. So start out as proto A, A.1, A.1.A, A. and then I would go back to um, other designations there on. So we open this one up. And it brings all my parts in again, just like here. Um, this is a relatively small part, so I'll start with the front view. Looks relatively good. Project up to the top view. The side view is going to be the exact same as the front view, so it's not needed. When you're well, dealing like you're with... Just, you're just leaving the other part on there. Yeah. You can only put, like, two... Two, Two, maybe it depends on how you draw it. You might be able to get four parts. Uh, if you're doing small parts, you might get eight on a, pay, a sheet. This is only is that the, scale? This is, is to like scale. Half scale right? This is half scale, yes. Hi. You get lost? Oh, sorry. I didn't hear you knocking. 
wherever there's an open computer. Um, so yeah, so yes, you can get multiple parts on a sheet. This is an uh, 11 by 17. If you're doing a full on commercial project, you might be on a 24 by 36, which you're gonna get the, everything on one sheet and still have room to spare. It really depends on the sheet size you're using and the size of your parts. Okay. So in this case, I'm getting two, but this, the thing I'm pointing out here is they're the same on these sides. It's gonna look exactly the same. So what I really need is a bottom view. That's a little different. And so I'm gonna put the bottom view here. Now that just broke the other rule that we talked about last time is don't put stuff in the title block. So when you get to things like this, you might have to reconfigure your sheet. So I'm going to take this whole grouping here. I'll start with the parent. We'll slide over here. They can go off of your title block. Then I'm going to take this group and we're going to slide these over to here. Take my text and move that with it. And then I'm going to take this guy and put it up here. Now by doing things like this, so you can compose your sheet makes it so that you can get as much information on a piece of paper as you can. Um, where does that line to right now? That should be up. That's okay, we can break that. Just break the alignment. So that break alignment becomes kind of handy because I attached it to this view here. Okay, now I've got this next part on here. There's quite a bit of things going on here that are kind of critical. Okay, um, one being that this is the bottom and this is the top um, piece that goes in. And again, I want to see what's going on inside there. So I'm gonna cut a section here through the middle of this guy. And we'll just pull that to the side here. Okay, so now I have a section and it keeps them ordered. Just because A is over here and B is on the left, and that's that's okay. As long as they're labeled, people will be able to follow what's going on there. Now, if I look in here, we need to put in some pretty tight constraints. This is a friction fit part here. This down here is a slot. And I look and I probably should have turned that a different direction to get the slots on there. These little nubs are not dimensioned. Um, but they're dimensioned here and here, so I'm going to be okay with that. But they're very, very small. Now, we talked about throwing dimensions on here. I'm going to start with this inside up here first. This is a limit condition. It's a maximum material condition or a least material condition. And what that means is because there's another piece that slides in here, this has a tolerance range that I have to maintain. So when I put my dimensions on there, annotation, smart dimension, I'm going to go in from this edge to this edge. It's going to give me a diameter because it knows that I'm dealing with a round surface. So it gives me the diameter symbol. It's a 1.81. That is its maximum, um, that's the minimum size it can be. Let's put it that way. So that's its minimum size. So now I need to adjust this. And ultimately, you'll need to know what's going into that so that size fits. But here's how you make that limit dimension. When I click on the dimension code tolerance, I'm going to change it to um, let's go with um, let's go with uh, da, 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 da. do we did a limit? Let's do um, to a maximum fit. Okay, that is the if that's the maximum size, then then the other part has to be smaller than that. Okay. If I change it to a minimum size, that okay, that's the small, it can be larger now. That gives me a little bit of leeway. But I'm dealing with plastics. And if I give a minimum size, then when you build this, your only option if you need a bigger slot there or a bigger opening is to sand it down. Well, if I'm sanding on this, 
I don't have a lot of room here. There's, it's kind of limited, really. And so I've got to be careful with what I'm standing. I am not going to mention this symbol here at all. It's not part of, it's, that's me, the customized portion of these. So I'm not going to worry about doing that. But I do need to start getting my dimensions on here. Your better dimension in this case is going to be like we did the other day, which is your limit dimension. And again, putting in that your max is what's going to govern it. We're going to go no more than three thousandths of an inch in size increase on there. And so there is the bottom is the original dimension, but it could be this dimension. It could. If I do it out of metal, you have to then do a couple of other steps. You got to look up your thermal expansion rate for that metal. And what that means is, is if you have metal, like most things, when they get warm, it extends and increases in size. So if it's a tube, it gets a bigger diameter. If it's a rod, it gets longer. If it gets cold, it reduces in size. And water is the only other thing that I know of. And I may be, there may be something else in the world. But water does the exact opposite. So if you're doing a product for holding liquid, you've got your bottle is expanding opposite of what your liquid expands. Because if it's a liquid, then there's a water-based component to it. This is why we use aluminum for soda cans and glass. Okay, glass has a very, very low thermal expansion rate, so it's not going to change size. But other products like plastic bags have a high expansion rate. So we want to, like your two liter bottles. So we want to keep that kind of thing in mind. And so we'd add the dimensions onto here and put this all into effect. Again, if it's on the outside, we put it between the views. And it's a little crowded here, and that's fine. We have different levels that we're seeing on the top. Those lines we're seeing here correspond to the section view. So if I'm going to dimension these out, um, I would start, and I'm going to do this overkill a little bit here. So I have that outside, then this value, then this value, and put that up here. Then down in the slot, we have this edge. And we'll do one more. I'm going to pull that over here. Those correspond to everything down in this view as well. And so if I'm going to smart those out and dimension them out, they would look like this. So I'm showing you different techniques now instead of, of ways you can do it. This does not need to have a limit to it. It's part of the de design profile. Um, when I get to that point, my next one will be down to here. And I pull that up. And then down here, and I'll probably take this one down below. Which means my little note here needs to move a little bit. But um, as you're dimensioned on things, what about this angle? How do I know where that angle, where should I put that dimension? Where would you think a good place to be to put that angle? Would you put it on the section or on the front view? What, what angle again, sir? The tapered angle here. Part of the section view, Tim? Yeah, because the only place I'm going to get the thickness is here. So first I would do on one side of this, I do the thickness of this wall because that changes and it changes here. So I want to make sure that is understood. Then there's another change that happens up at the top. Well, that's kind of crazy. Oh, well, is that how you drew our uh, drill presses? Yeah. That's sick. Yep. So this portion here, anything else right along here, that's this embodied, embezzled, or de de decorated element. I'm not worried about that. But I went from this thickness down to this thickness, somewhere in this area here. And so because there's a transition, I'll show this value as well, so that the manufacturer understands what's happening here. Now the angle, like I said, it's probably best to have it here. And my angle on this to take from here, and I'm going to use this edge, and I'm going to put it here on the side. Okay. 
So you try not to put things inside your object or on the object as much as possible. You want to keep them straight and clean. Um, size wise, it relates to the two. Might have to do a little bit of positioning here. Let me pull this over, turn that off. Slide this over just a little bit. And then go through and give heights real quick. And just now what I'm going to do on the, let me teach this one, I guess. It's a good time to. There are two main types of dimensioning that you're going to use. The first one is what um, we call um, continuous dimensioning. You use that primarily to be seen in architecture where it looks like this. This would be continuous dimension. You go from this point to this point, and that would be there. And then this point to that point, and that would line up with it exactly. Whoops, same thing. Here to here. Smart dimension would be good to turn on. Okay, and so this is continuous dimensioning. And if we use it in engineering, it tends to be a little complicated to convey what we're really getting, especially what I just did there. So notice what's happened with the arrowheads that are on my dimensions. They are starting to overlap. And so it gets a little harder to understand what's going on, especially if you're running a CNC machine where you have to put in all of the code for all this to happen. So this would be done on a CNC machine with a metal lathe. It would adjust the bits to create these diameters and sizes. All that has to be coded in. Well, running along this string, it's a little confusing. So we have another way of doing that. And so just kind of remember that on this other side, and again, don't do both. Don't ever dimension something more than once. Okay. No, it's you're more likely to create human error by putting in too many dimensions. So when you over dimension something or dimension it twice, if you don't, if you change the part and you miss one of the dimensions, and so you have two values for the same thing on a drawing, which one does the manufacturer use? Then you're subject to lots of error and mistakes. So rather than using the continuous dimension here, we're going to use a baseline dimension. And baseline dimension looks like this. I go from the top all the way to the bottom. And that sets my total height. So now I don't have to add that all up. So that's another error I removed from the human factor. If I have someone add that up, you would hope they'd use a calculator. You would hope they'd write it down. But the reality is they're probably going to do it in their head. And then they make a mistake. Okay. So we then remove that. Then I'm going to start from the same starting point from here to here. And that value goes there. Then from the same starting point again, down to the next one. And that value goes here. And notice the dimensions start to stagger. So it's getting a little easier to read. Makes it a little easier on the eye. And then they do one more from here to this level. And I'm not going to mention the last one. So in this type of dimensioning, we've given the overall, we've given them the other basic values they need, but we are requiring the manufacturing to do its self check to make sure that these added together subtracted from this still equals the value it needs to be. It also allows that if I need this to be a little bit longer, I can make a simple adjustment to this dimension without changing all of these dimensions. Okay, so it gives me a little more create, a little more flexibility in the manufacturing process. So this is baseline, it all has the same starting point. Okay. So this is the style you typically use, and you always leave one value off. Always leave one value off. All right, now we need to do a little more work on this. The bottom has a couple more dimensions on there that I need to add. I need to know where this little stem guy goes. Come on, little stem guy. There you go. 
and I'll put that there because it applies to both. And this is figured over. Again, watch, make sure it stays readable. That's still our governing rule here. But it's hard to get any more dimensions on this. So SolidWorks and most CAD prog programs give us an opportunity to do what's called a detailed dimension, where we can zoom up on a really small element and give value to it. So if you were to then do text on the side of your lightsaber, and I was requiring you to dimension that text, you would probably hate me, um, but this is how you would do it. You would activate your view, go into your view layout, or right click, get off that, right, click on that sucker. This is why I don't use the right click very often. Um, if you can't get that to activate, and I'm having a hard time activating it right now, if I go up to my view and I go here to detail view, when I bring that on to my area, so sketch a circle to continue your view creation. If you do not want a circle profile, please create a profile before selecting the detail. Okay. Well, I want, and usually they are circles, I just want to draw a circle around that part right there. And then I bring it over. And now that part is two times the size it was. And I can change that to a higher value. But now when I go in to dimension that, I can get a little bit better value and see a little bit easier what size that is. So that if I'm dimensioning that, I can really understand how that works. So I have my overall here, so I don't need to do more with that. But that gets me see what's happening there. Okay, so if, if you have a detail on your light so which you need to enlarge, you use the detail view in order to do that. And if you want to, like I say, I want to have a different shape. Let's see if I can do a different shape here. So I'll create, oh man, a sketch. I'll use this guy. And we'll create a weird, I hate this tool, by the way. This is not my favorite tool. We create that shape, have it selected, go to drawing view, hit detail view, and that becomes my wiggly profile shape. Notice this one's <coughs> quite a bit larger because it's a larger area, but that's the other method. You have to create it, then while it's active, get you the detail view. Okay. And I'm gonna take that out. Okay, so that gets us two parts on here. In the title block, it's just to still say assembly. That's what it said on sheet one. It says lightsaber. Sheet two says assembly. So again, remember how to edit your sheet. Someone's shaking their head. A one. Anybody? Andrew, do you know how to edit your sheet? Andrew's shaking his head. He's the only face I've got going here. You have to take off the alignment constraints. Nope. You, um, to do to edit the sheet. I want to edit the title block. Oh, yeah. I do the shop sheet right click yeah, edit. and edit sheet format. Very good. Okay. Yeah, well, then why weren't you shaking your head like you knew what was going on, man? I was given the, I was given the this has been the hardest year to teach because you guys have been the quietest teaching year ever. So quiet. All right. So I need to go in and change these. So this is still my lightsaber assembly. Put that in there. And your name is still going to go here, but the title, this title needs to be kind of different. And um, go back and, whoa. How do, you, how do you do the title get two different parts of it? I'm going to show you that. That's what I'm getting to. I just want to get out of my edit sheet mode here for a minute. Da, 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 da. What is going on with my selections today? Delete. Yeah, I don't want to delete. That would be bad. That's sheet one. I want to be down in sheet. This sheet. Okay, so there's no title here. Whereas when we went to sheet one, or the battery slot, here, sorry, sheet one, there's still no title there either. Okay? So in the battery slot, you don't have to be in edit mode to put your title. Okay? Now, these parts, if I go back to my first sheet, 
word simply the name of the file they were. That's really not very descriptive. This one is, these are not, okay? So that makes it kind of difficult. So you can go in there and break the link, which I would not recommend you do, or think about how you've named your files. You can do a rename, but then you have to rebuild your assembly. Um, so you might in your description, it might be something as simple as, okay, we're gonna add some text here. Come on, got my text box there. There it goes, okay. So you get that active. And so proto C, which is number two, that's the top. So this would be top part of I'm sorry, I just realized I didn't have all caps on. Oh, I know it's so crazy and it's everything. Okay, it's gotta find this thing. Top part of right. Okay, so just a description so we know what that is. Okay, and it just kind of makes it easier for people to understand what's going on there. You can add additional columns to this as well if you want um, through the different tools here. But um, ultimately, you just want to make sure people know what you're referring to. So if this is my top part of saver. I lost it there, McClendy. Um, so we can keep that in there. There's a little. How'd that turn to a T? Not sure what's going on there. Something went, I clicked the wrong key somewhere. Anyway, so name them correctly. When I'm on sheet one here, though, battery slot sheet, this is actually sheet two. And if I look, it's numbering it for me. I'm not sheet two or three because I added a sheet there real quick. So it's there. I do need to put in your a name. Please go here and you do the title the same way you did um, your name. It's just go up to your annotation, note, bring it down into the title area. And this is going to be the battery slot. And um, let's see, battery slot. And then we'll do an enter and do an and lower. Oh, uh, we'll do lower hand grip. It's giving it new names as we go here. Okay. So that I know it's on this sheet. Okay. That's just what we're doing with here. Now, ultimately, what's happening here is this piece here. Let me go my numbers. This slips over the top of this. Okay, so there's my values, and here's my values. So let's take a look what's going on here. This can, will this work if this is at a maximum of 0.1 or 0.813, and it's a minimum of 0.812? Will those go together? Can I fit those together? The answer would be Yes, chemo sabe, because this is bigger than this. Not by much, but it's a friction fit. So it'll be really tight, very, very tight. But this will slide over this. And this, if it gets this small, will not wick with this. Okay, so if I go allow that to go up to 0 0.185, it's a no-go. Okay, this won't work. So I look at that, my minimum works. Oh. I got to look at my numbers. This is not looking very good. I hope I got the right parts together here. So when you look at these limit dimensions, they have to make sense. In this case, it's starting to not make sense. So I've got to go back to my assembly and look at what I've got going on here. So this goes into that. So let's see if that makes a difference. Go back to the drawing here. This goes into this, so that's a 0.110, it'll fit there. So in the maximum conditions, so the biggest, 0.813, will fit in 0.815.
0.810 will fit in 0.812, so I'm good. This is all good, it works, and it's got some, some fit to it, okay? Do I need to keep dimensioning, or are you ready to just work? Wow. The excitement just is baffling. You can hear the roar of the crowds. Oh my gosh. Someday. So you want me to keep going? More, more, more of this? Okay, you asked for it. <laughs> okay, sheet three. Now, if I'm looking now, I've got sheet one, battery slot, and then rename now. And this is now going to become my new sheet two. Uh-oh, that's a problem. I can't have two sheet twos. So sheet two has to be renamed first to sheet three. Whoa, Shet. Hey, Shet, thanks for playing. This is now sheet three. Thank you. This is now going to become sheet two. So you want to make sure you're kind of watching that if you do make different um, sheets, that they have to be numerical, and you can't have two the same number. All right, bringing the next part on then. Woohoo! Go find it. I right, got the A's. Let's try the B. Yay, B. And we'll pull the front view on. Now, is there a need for a side view? No. Is there a need for a top view? Yes. Is the bottom view different? No. So I don't need a bottom view. Okay. So that's good. Woohoo. Um, I do want to see the hidden lines here, though. So this is just a hidden view. Oh, that's very interesting inside of there. What is going on? Very, very interesting. So we I probably. Russian. My Russian? Yeah, I'm friend Russian. You have a friend who is Russian, do you? Does yeah, he guess what his name is? Ivan. Uh, Alex. Oh, seriously. All right, here you you have Russian, Alex? No, not me. I have a oh. buddy. Actually, his dad's name is Alex. His name is Max. And his dad has like a thick Maximilian, voice. most likely. Yeah. Wait, oh, Alex, is that Max uh, Korkishno? Yeah. Ah, yes. Korkishno is very prominent yes. Russian name. Ah, oh, I love Max. He's awesome. His bomb? Good. Thanks. Because that, that's the first student interaction we've had all year. That was so great. I feel almost normal. All right, I'm going to cut a section cut through here. Why am I cutting a section cut? Because there's something funky going on there in the hidden lines. So they cut it right down the center. Bing, bang, boom. Got to love how it zooms. Wow, a lot of information on that. Cool. There's my slots. So now I can make sure those are all created right. Um, on your slots, those that haven't printed yet, you might want to make them a little bigger on the slot so you can get things to tighten in there. Some of them are printing out, they're really tight um, because you made exactly the same size, which is fine, but you will have to do a little bit of sanding on them to make them smoothly transition there. Okay, throwing, um, probably should name this, this is the hand grip. Just put a title on it. Remember all these little things to do. Pop that down there. What size are titles? from those that care. What size would make a title? Isn't it point two? Point two, thank you, Andrew. Man, I, I'm starting to really like you a lot. Okay, this is my handle, my hand grip. I'll put that down on there. And if you want, you can really kind of do a little pizzazzy, like bold it if you wanted to. Okay, hand grip. Woohoo. There's a section. And notice we're on E, okay? So if I go back to two, there's C. D, I deleted. That was a funky thing I did. Silly me. So I'm now at E on the next sheet. I want that to be back to D. So we can click on that and we can change that. It's a little 
little scary. Let's change it here first. Oh, just got email from Emmanuel that he just entered the Zoom room, but he's been here for a while. Make that a D. If we change it here, then it changes here. So you can change the text, but it's easy if you change the section cut line, it'll automatically connect those and link them up. I can't believe I'm dimensioning this. All right, here we go. Heights. Boom, ba ba doom, ba ba doom, right between the middle because it applies to both. And that's funky. What the heck happened there, guys? See, sometimes I'll make mistakes to see if you guys are watching. What happened? What's wrong? You don't need both places. You need a bottom view. Is it a bottom view? Bottom view is the same as the top view. What's wrong on this screen right now? Look at the blue. It's crooked. Oh, thank you. Why? Because it's tapered. Nope, it's, it is not. not the reason it's it's this way is there is an endpoint here and here. There's two oh, endpoints. So you have to watch what you're clicking. Now, that's easy to fix. Just take that out. But if you've got straight lines, you can do endpoint to endpoint, or you can just hit the line itself and keep it straight. Okay. So both will work on there. Okay. All righty. I need to also, while I'm at this, show the height of this opening that I have here for the um, infrared sensor. So I'll just go from the bottom to there. And pull this one in a little bit. And actually pull this out just well. Turn out the dimensions. That's the downside. If you're in dimensions, you have to end the dimensions to move things. It's a little annoying. But it's kind of the nature of the beast. And we'll throw another one in now to get the height. Again, I'm using baseline dimensioning here. And I do have to go in and adjust. So things stay readable. That's probably the biggest thing in the mark on these is if it's not fully readable and legible. Okay, so really pay attention to that and keep things so you can read them. Okay, now the height on this, this is a little different because I can't really dimension from the edges. This is a circle. Um, so dimension from the edges is kind of a no-no because I can't really physically do that. I mean, people try. Gosh, man. People really try a lot. Um, but you can't put a ruler on a circle and, and, and measure it. So what I want to do is make sure that when we cut the hole, and this will be probably done with a punch, there are such things as square drills. Crazy enough as that sounds, but there are. I just need to get the size of this. So I know that from here to here um, is 0.3. So from here to here should also be 0.3. And so now I can work that. Again, I'm making the manufacturer do some math to verify and check their work. It's, it's just a good thing to do. The thickness of the wall happens on the section. And because this is all one piece here, I can come over and add the initials or come below it even. TYP. So I know that's the typical wall thickness for this whole part on here as we work that through. Then we've got the top here. Um, I can see where my hole comes through. There's a fillet there. Uh, I have to dimension the fillet down here on the section. The fillet cannot dimension on the hidden line. You've got to find a way to get all those information pieces in there. So I'll have to do that in the section. And it's going to be the most prominent arc. This one arc here is coming out this circle. It's a little um, enforced perspective. So I'm going to do the radius on this and position that so it reads properly. And that's going to be the tricky part is finding that happy point of. It's a kind of a small little bugger there. Let's see. 
Okay, so I get that radius in there. So I know that radius. And that's also a typical value. And I'm really finding where that location is. I'm not liking that so much. Let's go over here. So I'm going to do it over here just so it's easier. Again, makes it easier to read. Um, I'm going to put my typical on there as well. So that we know that that's the same radius all the way around. Or we could do something else. You could do, um, because it has four sides, we can put 4x on that, and that would work as well. Let's do that. And that would do the same thing as doing typical. So probably the better way to go is just go 4x, do all four sides the same radius, and that will get that set up for you. Okay. All righty. Questions? This is all great, going good. Okay, we'll just keep going. So fun. Now, here it's going to be a little. Um, I need to do something different to dimension this trackway. I can dimension most of it up here to a point, and so I'm going to throw on what I can. Let's get that activated there. Sorry about that. So I know that the depth is here. And that's that's quite an interesting depth. I'm kind of concerned about that. Uh, I know the height. And pull that out. That one I'm not concerned about. That's um, I can get to um, a center point here and dimension that. That's probably not the best place to dimension that uh, as I look at that because that's confusing. So what I did here is I went from the edge to the edge. How does how does anybody know where to drill? So think about how you would make it out of a piece of wood. What would you have to know if you were to make this um, yourself in your home shop? This dimension here will do me no good whatsoever. I can't do anything with it. So I'm going to take that one away. I'm probably going to lose this one here as well. And then come over here to my top view. And I've got a center line. And this center line goes in both directions. This is what's going to be my... Um, control arm for this. So I'm going to go from the center to the edge and measure that. That is something I can use. That tells where this part goes. I can also go and do the overall thickness here. And I've done that on the section below, which is fine. But now I'm going to also go off the center and give that value as well. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's all they've got to work with on this rod of metal or wood or, or a tube of plastic to measure off of. They've got to go off of something. So give them the ability to go off the center and then back down as they create those parts. So that's a little bit more clear than what's happening here because I know how far over I'm coming from the center. I do need to put in my diameter. So I've got the one diameter here hit a line so I can't dimension that. So I have to dimension this guy. And because it's broken, I can't get a diameter on that. But I need a diameter. This is a tube. So you can do um, an intersection point here and here maybe. Nope. So in order to get that diameter, I might have to come over to the side section view. I don't want that there. It's kind of a kind of not what I want. Um, so let's go with the radius. We'll do a radius instead. So I'll pull the radius out and place that again where it where your dimensions are all grouped as much as you possibly can. This one's going to switch over here too. So keep your dimensions all where you don't make people hunt for them. It's not Easter. I'm not looking for eggs. Okay. Now I know where this slot goes. I can see the slot. I don't have the depth. So I'm going to put that on here in the section view. That's going to come uh -oh. yeah, it's going to be over here, which means I got to move this to here. So one thing changes another. You have to keep making changes to things as you go. Um, and, and that's normal. OK, 
okay, make adjustments as things go. So I know how far down it goes. I know the width that comes from up here. I have no idea what's going on with this piece here. I, there's no way for me to see that. So I need a special section cut. I'm going to cut the section on this view. And then go back to my view layout. I'm going to turn my dimensions off. I'm going to do a section view. And I'm going to rotate the view. Instead of being vertical, I'm going to go horizontal. I'm going to put it right in the center of this track. Just right there. Check that off. And now I've got a view. I'm going to pull it up off the screen for a minute. And then they come over and right click. Whoops, filtering going on there. Come down to alignment and break the alignment. And move this whole view. Come on. Should I put that off the screen? Take that filter off. It's driving me nuts. Now I can move this over. Now, if I look at that, now I can see what is going on with that um, view. And I'm going to start with a dimension from the end to the start of that trackway. It looks like I make that fit into the view there. And I'm going to kind of have to move things down just a little bit, looks like. Um, my next is a smart dimension is this inside radius. And if I can, I want to keep that from crossing over if I can. I'm not, not going to be able to do that. So there's that radius. And I need another radius for this piece here. Between the two, there's a little bit of a discrepancy there um, that I have to work with. Okay, So that's where that slot gets to mention. And you're going to have to modify each of these dimensions. So I'm going to try and do that here. Let me just move this down a little bit more so I have some more room to work with. The 90 and then bring out to the border. Don't cross this line. Don't cross that line. Move my dimensions in a little bit more if I can. So I can get this out just a little bit more here. And I'm not like, well, I can do this. I can move these guys down. It's probably what I needed to do anyway. So I'm composing the sheet. So sheet composition is probably what you spend a good amount of time doing is just to get everything to fit where you want it to fit so you can show what you want to show and make it look good. Make it look good. So on each of these dimensions, I need to say this happens twice. So 2x, then 2x, and 2x. And it's jumping around a bit. I'll have to fix that in a minute and reposition things and pull them out a little bit. So just, again, easier to read. And it might be easier now if I pull that in a little bit more. So that's how I get those slots dimensioned. Um, so I know where that's going, so I can see what's going on there. There's more to there that we need to do, still do. But I am now going to let you finish them out. I've done three of the four parts. So you guys can, and I'll keep working here on this one unless you guys have questions. But no one's really looking at me, so I'm assuming you're all busy. So we'll just let it go with that. Okay. Any of you guys online have any questions? Because the class is dead. I'll be able to email you. Your special question. You're so special. So I'm going to do this in three sheets, it looks like, with this one. What? That's a nightmare. Nothing, not even a text today, chat text. 
I'll break that one. I'll keep aligning these up. I'm not sure why I keep doing that. So you can see when you get these embellishments, there's a lot going on there. What you need on this view is how you hold in that um, dowel and how you open it up so that parts can fit through. And I've got a radius on here. So I'm going to do that um, dimension. This is kind of an interesting dimension here. If I wanted to mention that surface, it's a little, then you do it with a section cut, which I need anyway. So I might as well do that now. And then I go back and help Alex. I'm trying to avoid Alex, but I can't avoid him anymore. And go to line that, break line that. That's a funky, oh, it's upside down. I should not have cut it to the bottom, but oh well. And there's the radius. There's the radius. Happy day. So good, so good, so good, so good. But that way it's not in the road. All righty. Well, I'm going to pause the recording for right now. And we'll go around and... Okay, when you get your sheets all done, then you need to convert them to a PDF. So you're going to go to File and Print. And it's going to bring up the print dialog. Change it to an Adobe PDF file. You want to do all the sheets at once okay and then all you should have to do is hit okay and then what that'll do is and that's on every computer it has a pdf writer so if you put that and then you'll upload i have not put the drawing uploads into canvas yet though i was going to wait until after friday to do that so i didn't show any midterm grades so but that's what you'll do okay so i will um I'll, i guess i'll put that in now and i'll just put the due date for um, a week from Friday. Does that work for you, Tim? So I'll, okay, I'll, I'll put it in this afternoon um, or during lunch in about an hour, and then you can upload them so you don't have to keep worrying about where they're at. Okay, let's go see what Alex wants to do.